Patrick Fendaro, co-founder at Vetted Biz. Today, I want to go through a cease and desist letter that we received from a franchisor. Now, in operating Vetted Biz for nearly three years now, we've never received uh, a cease and desist letter or received the threat of legal action for producing content on, on franchises. So if you'd like to hear a little bit about what's what's happened and, and this complaint that we got from this franchise, continue on uh, with this video. So we received a cease and desist letter from Hot Brands LLC and Hotworks. They jointly sent a cease and desist letter to Vetted Biz April 6, 2022. Um, so just about a month back, we received a letter from their corporate attorney citing infringement of trademarks, copyright, as well as false claims. In this case, though, we wanted the vetted biz community to decide what should change on our website. So their principal issues were, the, were with copyright infringement and hidden fees. Now, I want to turn it to you. What is a hidden fee for franchising? I generally see franchisors charging royalties, a marketing fee, and an ongoing fee. And then there might be some other minor fees that they're getting. Hopefully they're not getting too much money on the supply of the product or services they provide franchisees, but that could be another whole story uh, and a separate video on that topic. Now, to give context, I had qualms with a media article I read on Hotworks boosting about their low monthly royalty of just $550 a month. So this is much lower than the standard of charging four to six percent of sales for a fitness franchise. And on the research that our, our team did, there were a bunch of other ongoing fees, which it's normal to have ongoing fees for the uh, a franchise system, but some of them seem pretty high. And I had an issue boosting that the royalties are super mega low when there's other fees that are, are charged throughout the length of the franchise agreement. So we'll leave it to you where we'll go through some of these uh, fees, but it's basically four or so pages of, of ongoing fees. Um, point of sale software, technology fees that the franchisee is obliged to pay uh, on top of that $550 a month. So is it a hidden fee? You know, if they don't market these fees and it's just in that 100 plus page document, the franchise disclosure document for, for Hotworks, I leave that open to you. I'd love to hear your feedback. What defines a hidden fee in franchising? I want to hear from prospective franchisees, franchisors, um, as well as current franchisees. What's a hidden fee in franchising? Please leave a comment on that. Um, when I investigate a little bit more about Hot Brands LLC as well as Hotworks, is they have another affiliate company, Planet Beach. In the last article we did, we didn't dig into the franchise system performance of their affiliate company, Planet Beach, but it's not so good. Uh, it's been around for many years, and the start of 2016, they had 151 units across the United States, and now at, at the end of uh, 2020, they just had 43 locations left. So while many of their franchisees were closing, um, the franchisor was doing fine, principally from the sale of products and services to the franchisees. They were able to make $6 million in, in sales, as well as have an income of $900,000. So that's Planet Beach, the, the franchisor, while the franchisor was doing pretty well from all I can see from their income statement, the franchisees were struggling and a lot of them were, were closing. Another thing that's, I guess, not so much of a surprise because I got a cease and desist letter from, from uh, an affiliate company, but Planet Beach has a lot of litigation and it's something prospective franchisees should know when, when franchisors are more litigious or not because you know they can stick to the agreement fully or when there's an issue with the franchise location and both people put their, both the franchisor and franchisee put their best foots forward, they decide to part ways. Um, but if the franchisor doesn't want to have it amicable, they can charge the minimum royalty for 10 years, 20 years, whatever the contract is, as well as those ongoing fees. And there are going to be big penalties for closing your location. So the downside of franchising isn't just losing your initial investment. It's that ongoing liability because you're signing a 5, 10, 20 year contract with that franchisor that you've got to pay generally those ongoing fees no matter if you're open or not. So just be sure to know who you're getting into to business with. Um, for Planet Beach, you know, with less than 50 locations left, they had 10 plus lawsuits disclosed in the Planet Beach FDD for 2011. 
And that's quite a lot compared to brands uh, of their size. And, you know, three are still ongoing. Generally, if there's 50 locations, you, you might see one lawsuit, two or zero lawsuits, but 10 plus lawsuits and three ongoing, that's something to be mindful of and probably want to talk to some existing franchisees of Planet Beach as well as former franchisees of Planet Beach to get a little more color there because, you know, there's always two sides of the story. Hotworks affiliate Planet Beach appears to have sued multiple former franchisees that had closed locations. Now, I don't have all the details here. And again, the franchise war might have been in the right. There's always two sides of the stories. Um, but definitely worth exploring for perspective Hot Works franchisees um, as it's an affiliated business with the hot brands. Uh, so it's definitely something to, to look out for. And it reminds me of a case uh, when franchisors are suing franchisees that have already closed. Of, of this millionaire franchise or Dental Fix RX that sued a franchise, an ex franchisee of Dental Fix that we had on our YouTube channel and podcast. He was sued for 18 months of unpaid royalties, leading to a, a personal bankruptcy. So, again, prospective franchisees beware. Know who you're getting into bed with. Uh, and if the franchise closes and you give your best effort for 24 months, What's the downside? Is the downside capped at all or could it go on for a long time that you have to owe hundreds of thousands of dollars until the agreement's over? So all that being said, ending on a high note, the Hotworks unit level economics are really, really good for a fitness brand, especially those top third performers where the top third of franchisees are making 200,000 plus a year um, and the business could cost as little as 240K to open. So they have multiple franchisees opening hot saunas across the United States. And that's a big sign of franchise success. When you have a single unit operator or someone that has a couple locations and they're opening up more locations, taking on bigger territory, that should mean that they're making money and they're reinvesting those earnings to open up more locations. So if the fitness studio is not making money, the franchisees most likely will not open up new locations. So take SR Enterprise LLC, for example, they have seven Hotworks studios currently open. There's another one in development. And looking at the recent Hotworks SBA loans, there's over 100 franchisees that have taken out loans from the past three years. So pretty good. A lot of people that are invested in the brand and there's multiple parties that are opening up not just one location, but multiple locations by the gross loan amount and the job creation numbers. It looks like there's a few that are, are planning or already opening three, four, five uh, saunas across the United States. So it's a very interesting concept, great unit level economics. So on a closing note, Hotworks and other franchisors listening or franchisees, if you don't think we're communicating uh, the data, the information accurately on your brand, just shoot me an email at patrick at vettedbiz.com. Also goes, you know, for other suppliers, people that are, are working with franchisors. I'm not getting paid by some other fitness concept that's competing with Hotworks. Um, we, we don't provide leads to franchise wars like other, uh, franchise portals out there. I uh, really just want to provide the best information to prospective franchisees, as well as current franchisees in the broader franchising community. So we want to hear from you and, and look to crowdfund the analysis with more and more insights, but having it based on the franchise disclosure document, as well as small business administration loan data. To, to see how many charge-offs there are across different brands and what the default rate is for thousands of, of franchise brands. So we love a lively debate. I want to learn uh, no hard feelings with Hotworks and, and their management, their executive team, and their affiliated businesses. And would love to host a, an executive of Hotworks if you'd like to be on our podcast and hear from you. There's a lot of great things going on with your brand. I think we can definitely put this uh, cease and desist letter behind us. Uh, appreciate all the listeners. If you enjoyed this, I hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel, leave us comments, see what we can improve on. We're here to continue learning alongside you and just find out more information about the fastest growing franchises, as well as very established franchise brands. Thanks. <laughs>